Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. Thanks for clicking on. This video is part of a special video series inspired by you guys. I've been asked before for a recipe or sausage book, which I don't have. So I thought I would share my favorite book with you, which is Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage by Stanley and Adam Marinsky. It is my favorite book. I think it's got great information in there for beginners and experts alike. And uh, to celebrate my favorite book, I reached out to Stanley Marinsky and he gave me permission to do Marinsky March. So we're gonna do a recipe out of this book every day of March. And all the recipes and all the processes are right out of the book, which will be in the link below. That is a link to the book will be in the description down below. So without any further ado, let's get into Marinsky March. Hey there guys, welcome to another episode of Marinsky March. This one's really cool, I'm excited to do it uh, because you don't need what, anything. I mean really you just need a, a funnel and a knife if you wanted to do this one and something to smoke it with. Um, it's called the Finger Sausage from page 208. I'll read right from the book here. One of the oldest known sausages that gets its name from the method used to fill the sausage casing. The casings were stuffed with fingers by means of any suitable device like a pipe, funnel, or a stuffing horn. Needless to say, a meat grinder was either not invented yet or only a few lucky ones happened to have it. The majority of people had to chop the meat manually with a knife. And that's what I'm going to do today. So I have some pork trim and beef trim that I'm gonna cut down with a knife into half inch or three quarter inch pieces. And then I got a little bit of bacon trimming, which I'm gonna to add to it. I'm gonna cut that down a little bit smaller. So there's gonna be no grinding in this sausage. It's all gonna be manually cut. So when you're doing that, the meat selection has to be uh, you know, cartilage free, silver skin free, uh, pretty, pretty decent quality trim, I think, in order to pull this sausage off is what I've picked. Um, and I'm gonna do that now, get it all ready for our seasonings, which is on page 208. Not sure if I read that yet from Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage by Adam and Stanley Marinsky. So I just got the pile here, guys, and I'm just gonna go through it really nice and slow and cut it down into little itty bitty bits, quarter inch pieces. I'm gonna be here a while. I'm not gonna make you guys watch the whole thing, but I'll show you what I'm shooting for. What did it say? Two to three centimeter, one to two centimeter pieces? Be here all day. Okay guys, that's kind of what I'm gonna shoot for. That's a bit big, this piece, but this is what I'm gonna shoot for. Little itty bitty cubes like this. The whole sauce is gonna be made out of that and then the bacon I'm gonna chop up even finer. So I'm gonna spend a little while prepping that and I'll show you when it's all done. Okay guys, I've been going through bit by bit <clears throat> and chopping them up with the uh, my small staking knife, but I have, it's quite tedious even to do only two kilograms. Uh, way back in the day, I can see why it had been a luxury to be a meat grinder owner, but now I've just started using my large steak knife and I'm gonna try and just chunk it up kind of like you would vegetables, I guess, or spices or something for a mix. Because uh, it is a very, very tedious process me quite a while just to do this this little chunk here so uh, I'm it's gonna be a very strange textured sausage I'm thinking but uh, I, I really I like it I and mean, I can say I've made it you know I made one of the world's oldest sausage recipes and if you guys don't have a grinder I mean you can do this be a bit of different texture like I said but this is definitely the quicker way get a big steak knife good and sharp mince it up like this so I'll carry on okay guys there's our pile of very small stew cubes and chunked up bits but I did my best to try and get uh, miss a few pieces here and there get it into little chunks I'm actually really looking forward to this sausage it's gonna be kind of cool prehistoric sausage now I'm just gonna chop up the bacon the same or I'm gonna actually chop the bacon up just a little bit finer if I can if I have the patience that took me like a half hour. Here comes the bacon. I'll start the process 
again, show you guys the final product. All right, we're starting to near the final texture. All right, just patience, guys. That's all it takes. Patience. This is kind of just a fun one. We'll see. I'll give you a review of the texture at the end here, for sure, if you want to try making it at home. But it's kind of a fun one to make. Something out of the normal anyways. All right, guys, I got the bacon all chopped up here into small little pieces. So the next step is, it says to add salt and cure to our meat mix and mix. Uh, I got all this stuff pre-mixed together here though, guys, so I didn't read the instructions, but I think that should be fine. So I'm gonna add that to our chopped up pieces. Mix it in. Oh, that smells really good. They all smell so good. It's such a good book, guys. Lots of kind of herby, warm herby stuff in this one. Mm. I'm not sure how good the protein extraction is going to be in this. But that's why it probably says to leave in a cool place, preferably in a refrigerator, for 48 hours before stuffing. I'm going to stuff mine first and then leave it in a refrigerator for 48 hours. Because uh, that protein extraction will occur inside the sausage casing as well as in a little marinating tub. But now I'm going to add my bacon. It's a little bit more bacon than the recipe calls for, but that's okay. No one ever complained about having too much bacon. Really get that all mixed in there good. It's a thick sausage. You can put this in the refrigerator now for 48 hours, but I'm going to stuff it into casings. And it doesn't specify the size of sausage casings, but I'm going to go for a little bit larger diameter, I think. So uh, I will get that prepped up right now, then these guys can sit for 48 hours. All right, guys, here comes the stuffing of the finger sausage. I'm gonna do it into some natural casings, which I popped into water just a little bit ago. I think these are 3840s or 4042s, so they're a little bit bigger diameter. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to prick these ones to help uh, with the air pockets, uh, just because of the, the size of the meat. All right, so I got it, uh, our casing, Load it up with some water. Allow it to slide on the horn more easily. I'm just gonna feed this on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to stuff these. Let's see how it goes. Just need a little to come out here. And there we go. It's kind of actually a little hard to push through the horn because of the size of the pieces. Hmm, <laughs> that's quite the textured looking sausage. Big chunks of, hopefully I cut everything up fine enough, but we'll find out. It's a little bit difficult to stuff because it comes out in kind of big chunks. I maybe should have used one size up on the grinder or the stuffing horn. But, uh, we'll see how she goes. Oh, and the linking. I'm curious to see how linkable these are. But I think maybe a guy should be stuffing them just a little bit more loosely than he normally would. But we'll see. Okay. So, guys, let's see how the linking goes. Let's see. Uh, I've got to read what size. <clears throat> it doesn't say what size to link them into. So, I'm going to do them into, uh, I don't know six to eight inch links, I guess. And that leg I anticipated there, a little bit tricky to link because of the size of the meat chunks that are in there. You really gotta massage the joint that you're gonna spin. You really wanna massage the meat away so it doesn't break the casing. <clears throat> I think that's gonna be the trick. And I'm still gonna do one, two, three. I can see lots of air pockets, so I'm definitely gonna have to prick these sausage casings but that's fine. One. Oh, it doesn't want to go. One, two, three. Pushing it. <clears throat> you basically got to push the meat so that there's nothing there at the joint you're twisting on these guys. Oh, they're very difficult. One, two, three. I think this would scare some people off at the grocery store. They're not used to seeing chunks of meat this big in their sausages. Kind of looks cool though. One, two, three. There we go, guys. 
the finger sausage. Quite dense, quite thick. So I'm gonna just take a fine knife, or you can get those sausage pricking tools, which I don't have, but just a knife with a fine point. I'm just gonna go through these and prick some holes in there and maybe that will uh, let some of those air pockets out over time. Okay, I'm just gonna pop them back in their little stainless steel tote they came from, guys. Stick them in the refrigerator for two nights and then we will hang them to dry and smoke our finger sausage. All right, guys, so our finger sausage, which uh, we, it didn't quite make, I didn't let it marinate for 48 hours. It's kind of more closer to 36, um, which I think will be fine. That color, you know, all that meat in there looks like it's got nice and cured. The colors change. I'm really interested to see this sausage. One of the first sausages, ancient sausage is what we're making. But uh, the step in this ancient finger sausage is to let it dry at this point for an hour till the outside becomes nice and tacky. You can kind of see that gloss there. I want that gloss to go away so that smoke really adheres to it. Uh, you could optional cold smoke these for two days at this point, but I'm gonna stick them in the hot smoker with the rest of these guys because I got it going. Uh, so one hour, then we're gonna pop it into the hot smoker. Okay guys, so the sausages, they were drying for an hour and now we're gonna pop them into the smokehouse, let them dry just a little bit longer and then start hitting them with smoke and bringing that temperature up. Okay guys, the finger sausage has uh, hit temperature, which means it's done. Should be nice and smoky when we open up the smokehouse door uh, with a nice brown color to it. So looking forward to it. Let's uh, have a look at our finger sausage. Oh, look at those guys. Look at that nice smoky color on them. This is our finger sausage here. And now I'm going to give it a cold water rinse, just to cool it down and stop it from shrinking up too much more and uh, we'll try it probably the next morning. I'm gonna let it drip dry overnight and we'll try it in the morning. All right there guys, give them a quick cold water rinse. Got the hose cold already, just to cool them down. And then they should bloom again. All right, that's enough of a rinse there guys. I'm gonna pop them in the cooler and we'll check them out tomorrow morning. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment you've been waiting for. We're now finally done the finger sausage. Here we go. Cooled down in the cooler overnight. And look at that nice color on those guys. Next step, dive into one and see the texture, how they taste. Looking forward to it. Whew, she's looking dense. But that looks <laughs> Looks pretty good. You know what? I was gonna. Th I was thinking that this one was gonna be so-so because of texture and stuff, but that's really good. It's got like a very coarse ham-flavored texture. The spices are very herby. Quite good. The little bit of bacon we put in there adds a load of flavor and moisture. Mmm. I'm going to bring it in so you guys can see this. Check out the coarse texture on that guy. I didn't think it would work so great, but uh, it sure does. Really flavorful, really yummy. I would uh, I'd make that again other than that's a lot of work, but that's really good. So guys, there you have it. That wraps up the finger sausage episode of Marinsky March. It goes to show you, you can make sausage even if you don't have a grinder. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And be sure to subscribe, and every day in March, we're going to make another Marinsky March episode just like this one. So thanks for watching, guys.